Uh, okay, hi. So my name is Carrie Johnston, and I am filming today on the traditional territory of Champaign and Ajac First Nations in beautiful Dakwakata Haines Junction. And my guest today is Eva Glansman. Eva, please introduce yourself. Yes, hi. Um, I live on the Haines Road between Kathleen and Desias Lake since 25 years, and I built up a, a tour business like over all these years, and and also built some cabins for guests to stay. And our most um, clients were international guests from all over and as well uh, Europe, especially. And, um, but always kind of um, did guided longer trips into wilderness for two weeks adventure on rivers uh, with dog sleds, adventures and camping and uh, getting a bit older and, and doing more easier trips and more photography um, tours where um, it's not so challenging just because yeah the, the stuff I guided 20 years ago is pretty much too too hard for me now to do. <laughs> and what's the name of your company? Yeah we're Gonsman Tours and Cabins. Um, we're working uh, um, now with Cabins more too and that's just something that started with uh, the pandemic too. Mm -hmm. So what are you learning about your business model as the world goes through this, uh, this pandemic? Yeah, it, it happened very quick last March. Like uh, I had a big uh, tour, kind of a group expected for a snowshoe camping trip in the mountains from Europe. And uh, like uh, the day, actually the same day they were flying they all wanted to still come but then we realized they would probably have to go right back home so that whole thing got cancelled and um first i mean it was kind of a, a gapping whoa what's going on and uh, listening and and just kind of uh, the whole thing was not happening anymore and all the tours that were planned for summer it looked to me right away that, that it's not going to happen and but even you try to be open and and uh, ready for it anytime and guests still wanted to come from w ways away and they thought the Yukon is the best place to go anyway and safe here I <laughs> do not get sick and but yeah I, I also found it, it was important that um, we actually canceled that trip from our own perspective um, just before the governments kind of decided uh, people should stay home. And uh, that was a hard decision. We, yeah, we lost uh, a big income from last winter. winter. But uh, I mean, we just said it, there's, there's no, no way. I don't wanna bring people here and, and get locals and new con into trouble with it. Like, and when, when Canadians can't travel, why should others come and travel here? Mm -hmm. And yeah, then then uh, um, it was kind of a, a bit of just kind of uh, trying to like reorientate, and and uh, I mean we we had the cabins here empty sitting, and and uh, uh, it was pretty. I I hope that you corners would would be allowed to come out of Whitehorse again, like. Uh, first it was all shut and they were not supposed to go outside uh, the town but I also could see that they definitely want to escape to some place and maybe recharge their batteries for for the day by day life so we were kind of when it was clear we could do something for for local guests like from Yukon and that's uh, what we're just pivoting now as well with the University of Yukon that gave us that uh, pivot program option. And I signed up for it and it, it's awesome. Like we're just trying to completely um, uh, kind of change everything to local, local people that we can 
have local customers and have something for them to enjoy out here. That's, uh, that's great that you were able to take advantage of the, the pivot program. So what are you, so in your, in your pivot to a more local client, what are you learning about Yukoners as a, as a potential customer base for you? Yeah, it's, it's very interesting. Like first, um, it wouldn't kick in very well because it was summer, I think. And lot, like, first of all, people thought we're closed. You know, because so many businesses are closed or it's not obvious that they're open. So the first thing I kind of dug out is uh, old opening signs and try to put them up on the highway. And, and uh, sure, the advertising and everything takes a little bit longer to, kick, like to make a kickstart to get local advertising, uh, to advertising. That's what we're doing now. But I just thought whatever we have uh, and has like and put a bit of a sign up, a new sign of cabins because the old sign didn't fit it very well anymore. Yeah, people knew we make tours, but they didn't really know about cabins. So I tried to change that right away, just also for people driving by here and they go now camping, but maybe in winter they want to have a warm place to stay and come for a weekend. And I'm happy we, we can offer that. And I, I learned that like the people that are coming already, they're so happy to be able to go somewhere and you need to make sure they kind of want to have a safe place. So I do more cleaning. We try to get um, just to get out there what we're doing that we take this serious and that we go by the guidelines and I do everything that could be touched by somebody could is kind of disinfected in between the bubbles that come and uh, but that I feel like yeah we hopefully have the trust of people that they are able to get out and do things and it's so nice for people to come here and and just get off also off grid and off line you know like uh, with the whole pandemic lots of people do communicate even more over computer and their whole families are more on their devices and everything and i'm here kind of we have a little bit of a island and there's no wi-fi for guests like um they come here and just go offline for a couple of days or they have to drive out a little bit up the road and they can have cell phone uh, coverage from there if they have something really important to check but we kind of think it's good to have a place to um get away from all that i like that what are you learning about leadership um, as somebody who's, you know, leading in, in the tourism industry here in the territory? What are you learning? Um, you mean with the pandemic? Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think uh, it's, you know, for a while I would ki kind of um, just watch it, listen lots to the news and kind of see in what direction does this go. But in the end, like I had to realize like what you can't change, don't focus on. Like we, it doesn't help to say, oh, all my guests can't come anymore. So I try to focus on, on what works and try to go push hard in that direction. And for the moment, that means like I totally have to work mostly with newcomers, and I wanna uh, show, yeah, kind of try to um, give them a, a place to recover from the city and from uh, they're, they're more isolated than we are here. We're always a little bit isolated, but it's kind of normal out in the bush, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it's important that we take the, you know, not to wait longer, like 
and maybe be a little bit pessimistic. And I think all the trips, all the guests, they want to now come that we had signed up for this summer and other tours, they want to come in 2021. But I think it's probably not going to happen. And maybe 2022 and maybe, I don't know when, but in between, there's a lot of other things we can do. And um, you kind of need a place to go and relax and, and especially nature. Nature is a safe place to be and gather in. Like, and they can come out. I, I can't see enough that we all push that people go out and find new ways to, um, if you can't do your sport that you that you uh, are used to do, then go for a hike or you know a hike. Nobody's gonna get uh, catch the the virus from going on a hike with other people if you kind of stay in the distance and stuff. Like uh, and uh, what we do with the cabins is just um, kind of rent it out just for one bubble and then it stays for a couple days empty and then we clean it really good and then a next bubble can come for the next weekend. So that's kind of the plan right now. But yeah, definitely take the opportunity to change. Like, don't wait. I mean, that it comes back to what was before, because I think, I think definitely it's not going to come back the way we were before. And especially tourism is kind of a luxury industry. Like that's only Tourism is only working when people have money and it's not an essential thing. So maybe you have to get more basic and do smaller, smaller things. I, may, I used to have guests coming for two weeks. Now it's two, three nights. And, but that's fine. Like I just try to do what I can here. It sounds like a really good plan, Eva. Are you learning any new skills or, or, you know, thinking about learning a new skill that's going to help support you evolve your business down this new path of focusing really local? Um, yeah, I do have more time with not having, being out uh, on these I would year for year go guide and, and ha have not enough time to look into my own backyard, actually myself, because I was kind of guiding on rivers and up the Dempster. Right now I would drive up the Dempster with some photography tours and, and then come home. And now I, I had time to go for a hike with a um, medicinal hike or so with the Kluani National Park for they offer really small, like small hikes and campfire talks. And I wanted to go um, listen to that. And I do connect more with local people. I have a bit of connection now also uh, again to elders and uh, more time to visit and listen in. And, and I'm glad to be able to make these connections and pass them on to, and the knowledge to uh, guests that that kind of like uh, are curious about things like I have more time to spend gathering and I could I would even like take somebody of my guests out if they want to go for a berry pick or something like let's let's just go together <laughs> this is all safe we can we can go walk out there and and that's not uh, yeah it's it's not we just have to realize there's so many things we still can do and I I see that people are very appreciative you know that they, they, they're very appreciative that they can come and spend the weekend here. They're super happy. Yeah. I know. I just saw your uh, pictures on Facebook of your um, uh, porcini or your King Bolit uh, harvest. You did well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some secrets that I keep. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. Uh, any advice, you've been an entrepreneur here in the territory for many, many years. Any advice for those who are um, entrepreneurs now or, or looking to start a business? 
Yes, yeah, uh, in all these years, um, we try to kind of uh, work with what we have and not borrow money for stuff to buy. I mean, we did it once too, but so I would rather say, yeah, until we can afford to buy a tour, little tour van ourselves, we kind of go and rent it until we have enough money to buy it. Maybe that's kind of, some people said, oh, that's stupid because you, you buy, uh, pay all this rent and that just goes into nothing. But yeah, at the end, now when something doesn't work out, like out here, we don't have a steady income and it can be gone any day and then you might have to do more self-sufficient. I mean, I do more gardening, I do hunting and, and providing for the food. Now I have more time, I can do that. But I'm glad I don't have a whole lot of money that I would have borrowed that that would really worry me now, you know, and whatever you do, start it small and make with whatever you have the money to buy what you need to get bigger. <laughs> and and try to not borrow too much, even if, if the government want to give you some stuff, if you have to pay it back, you still have to pay it back. And when are these times that we can pay it back? We don't know. Mm -hmm. What's been your wellness practice to kind of keep you grounded during this pandemic? Yeah, that's a, a good question. Um, I feel very, very fortunate to live out here. So I don't really feel lots changed for me because I already was like doing a lot kind of um, I mean, now I might even skip another two trips to town and only go every three, four weeks to town instead of before I would maybe go every two weeks or have more to shop for the tours and stuff. But um, I, I, um, I like to go for walks and move a lot. Like I, um, every day just take some fresh air and a dip, a cold water shower, <laughs> and uh, some fresh veggies, eat healthy. And I, you know, I try to still, it's, I was in town and wearing a face mask in the superstore. And I just realized, wow, well, it's hard to pass on smiles now these days when you have a face ma a mask on. It's so hard, but it's still possible. And I'm a big, I like to hug people, my friends, my neighbors, and I can't, I can't hug them anymore, but I pretend to hug them kind of like, like this, you know, like, and it's still, it still can get felt. And we just have to make a bit of a bigger effort and it's maybe not contact, but it still can go out there and your eyes can still send a good vibe out there. What makes my day, if I'm depressed or if I'm not doing good, somebody smiling, uh, we still should try to do it. <laughs> I agree, but I can, I can feel your hugs when you throw them my way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, which of the safe six, Yukon's got the sort of safe six practices for keeping us safe, which, which one have you found the hardest to integrate? Yeah, with me, it is just to stay on a distance, even if I have guests driving in my driveway and do not shake their hands, do not, I mean, I'm so used to to just be open hearted and welcoming and giving hugs and, and uh, expressing myself that way. And I find that really hard to uh, stay on distance, but I, I think we need to do it. And it's very important because I rather do this or, or wear a mask to go in a, in a store than having everybody shut down to move. You know, that would be so hard. People are hard hit already with not being able to connect. Uh, 
and the two months, I mean, when people could not go to their therapies or so, like that's so hard. Or if we, we really are not allowed to drive out of the city anymore, let's just do these rules. And, and we still have so much, we still have so much and, and we can still connect, be kind to each other and help each other. Like, even if it's not in a touch, like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you had any sort of shifts in the way you think about the world because of the pandemic? Any aha moments? Yeah. Yes, I definitely had. And I mean, that has to do with climate change. Like I always wanted to do something for climate change. And, but I felt like I, I just can't say a thing because I was completely working against like i mean I, I was working to have people here flying from all, half over the world over to come see me and i make my income like that and i i didn't want to tell them even like that i really think our climate needs attention really quick but i had the impression something will come like that people won't fly i had always this kind of i i said 10 years ago i think there comes the day where nobody will fly and funny thing is like in march it happens i never thought why i thought because of climate change pe people wouldn't go in a plane and didn't want it to hurt um um the climate more because of their children and the next generations and and but it seemed to be just I was I was hiding and I was not feeling okay. Like I thought my job is not I can't stand behind it totally anymore. And now like so all these planes were grounded in no time and people would tell me before you never see that that we're not gonna fly anymore. And here it happens and nobody's flying anymore. <laughs> and and it is because of the pandemic, but I mean, now we know it can be done and we all can go more local and we all should do more local. And even I'm not totally against traveling. Like if somebody has family, I'm totally like for it. Go see your family. That's very important. But maybe go longer, go once a year instead of three times a year. Like just be a bit more co conscious and we're just learning now that we have so much to see in our own backyard and why not explore that instead of going to New Zealand and here and there and and the same is for them they can explore their country so the tourism would go on like when <laughs> when all the locals do it in their own backyard and we tourism operators have to uh, offer something for locals and and it's possible i think <laughs> so you know we're we're in this you know we're six months into it and we've been talking a lot about how yukon is going to reopen and its economic sort of strategy and even today just Echoing on what you said, the Yukon government released its climate action plan uh, for Yukoners. So what are some of the values that you want to see as Yukon reopens its economy and builds for the next couple of years? Yeah, I, I would definitely just like that we all do more local produce too like like that we eat more local like that we eat more conscious of i mean i'm i had to do my steps there too i i still eat bananas and stuff from all of, from a place i don't even know how a banana tree looks like uh was kind of weird eh? and but uh I want to definitely eat more more stuff from around me and and uh, I I love the the attempt that like I mean the 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 year that this lady in Dawson did that um, would film about her family and and I mean that's kind of a a challenge for me I want to I want to get more that way too that I try to not buy much from outside and I'm still learning on what we can take out of nature and not just 
the food, you know, it also maybe is your skin, pro skin cosmetic produce that you could do yourself and then you don't have any packaging and plastic around it if you make your own creams and stuff can be done. Like, uh, actually, uh, you ask, um, my, my book I recommend is this here. <laughs> I, I read almost every, every day I read in, in uh, this Beverly Gray book and I try to learn more. <laughs> oh, are you still there? Your screen's frozen. Oh, there we are. Uh, I love that book too. It's a, it's a must read for every okay. Yukoner, isn't it? Oh, your screen's freezing. You have, yeah, our, we have connection. Yeah, okay. yeah our co connection issues. One of the, the challenges we have uh, conducting business in the north from a remote location on the Haynes Road to Haynes Junction, we don't always have the best of connections. Okay, Eva, I think with that, we're going to sign off. Thanks so much for your time. You're welcome, Carrie. And I, I hope every, everybody finds a way uh, to get over way smaller in a, I mean, I think we all have to work way harder to make the same, like, or make less. And, but just, I, I find, <laughs> I wish everybody a good luck with this and, and lots of energy and hope to see some out here. Thanks, Eva. Bye. You're welcome, Kay. Bye-bye.